Hey everybody, Jason here again with the video question line. Today's topic is how to dimension the depth of threads. The question that was submitted is simply how do you dimension full thread depth? So let's take a look at an example here and kind of dissect the different callouts or the different aspects of a callout for a threaded feature. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the usable depth or the thread depth of this feature. So here we usually see on an inch uh, thread, the thread diameter, and then you would have the threads per inch, or in the case of metric, the thread pitch. And then lastly, you'd have the thread type or the tolerance class listed here. And usually you'll have some sort of depth call out if it's a blind hole or a threaded feature that doesn't go all the way through the part and there's a certain depth to this feature. Uh, so we can see here this 0.625 plus or minus 0 0.030 is going to control the overall thread depth to the last usable thread. Now that last thread, the last full thread, can be a result of many different manufacturing methods. You can have taps or mill inserts or however you decide to create these threaded features. At some point, one of those threads will no longer be a full thread. In other words, it'll become a half thread like this or not fully threaded, or it might taper off and not be a full depth of thread and not very usable. So really, what we're trying to say here is this dimension and its tolerance is trying to control the location or the depth of the last usable thread. So this last full thread, the last thread that has 100% depth and full form is the point where we're going to take the location from. And that location has to be 0.625 plus or minus 30 thousands from the surface that that thread originates from. So we can see here that that is kind of a very specific control. Now, more often than not, what you'll see on drawings is this 5 8 11 UNC 2B uh, depth to 0.625. Now, this depth is a minimum usable thread, right? So at this point, when we say a depth of 0.625, it's saying you have to have a full thread at or beyond 0.625. So that means you could have full threads that continue on to this depth, but all I care about is at that at 0.625, I have full threads to work with. I have a full thread depth up to at least 0.625. Now that again leaves a little bit to be desired as to how far somebody might be able to go. And it might not be intuitive. It might be, uh, you know, something that you have to worry about depending on the manufacturer. And that can be something as simple as a conversation saying, hey, don't, don't be crazy and go too far. Um, but most design scenarios, there's not a wall back here or something too, too worrisome to consider uh, applying a tolerance to the max depth. However, if that's the case, certainly utilize the plus or minus, and you can go minus nothing and plus a lot of threads as well, right, on the thread depth. But again, that tolerance applies to the last usable thread being the location for that measurement, right? So how do we measure this, right? So in a pinch, we could simply use a fastener. But the important thing about that fastener is a lot of our fasteners will have not full threads at the end. In other words, they'll taper off to the end here. Maybe just one or two threads that won't be full threads. Those full threads can technically settle into these half threads on the female side. So really what we want to make sure is we grind or we level this fastener to make sure that the last thread on there is a indeed a full thread. That means that when we thread this in, that last full thread will stop threading the moment we don't have a full thread on the female side. And if we know the overall length of this fastener, when we thread this into that feature, we can see where it'll stop. In other words, it'll stop right at that last full thread. And then we can measure from the last full thread to this point here. And if we know the overall length of this fastener before we threaded it in, we can calculate the minimum depth that we got for our threads. So we can calculate how much usable thread is here by knowing the overall length here and then the residual that sticks out above it. We can calculate this guy here by just simply saying X minus the depth that still sticks out above that surface. So that's a quick way to measure it. Um, it's not a very accurate measurement. Obviously, we're using off-the-shelf fasteners. There's a lot of slop between the, the, the fastener itself and the threaded hole. But in a pinch, this is a good way to measure how deep you threaded that uh, female threads.
Now, there's plenty of ways to be more accurate to measure this threaded depth. Um, you could utilize something like a thread gauge, who has much more accuracy in trying to determine the thread depth. But again, these also have very specific types of threads. Some of them have lead-ins that you should not count uh, when checking the depth of this thing, right? So you could use this tool just as similar as you would use this tool. You'd thread it in there until it stops, measure the amount of that tool sticking out of the hole and move on with your day. Now, there are very, very specific gauges that you can have built and manufactured to the specifications of your drawings uh, if you're very concerned with the measurement of that thread depth. Um, and basically it would look something like this, although it'd be a manufactured gauge. And it has little windows here that says, as long as this little window uh, sits above or below the required surface, you can check that thread depth for that feature. Um, again, these are manufactured, they're rather expensive relative to um, just a simple fastener or a thread gauge like you would see here. But you know, sometimes we care about the accuracy of our measurements much more than just a quick check like this here. But if you ask most of the inspectors out in the industry, they're going to use a thread gauge or some sort of fastener or some sort of gauge that has these threads on it. They'll thread that into the feature, measure how much of that tool is sticking out above the surface and subtract that to get their minimum uh, thread depth that they've acquired in that inspection. So that's a quick summary of how to check threads here. Uh, and you can see that uh, there's plenty of ways to do it. Just know that the uh, dimension and the tolerance on the drawing is dimensioning and tolerancing the minimum usable thread, right? So that last thread that is a full formed thread, that sets the location of our measurement and that measurement has to meet the specifications on the drawing. So hopefully that clarifies things and thanks our for submitting. Our goal is to be your best source for gd &T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd &T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd &T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd &T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles